Minsky. Okay, come. Hi, I'm Jesus. Uh huh. Uh, where's Tom? Um, I say by now he's probably at the Buffalo Wild Wings watching the Grizzlies lead 20 to 60. Excuse me, am I supposed to know you? The answer is yes. I'm sorry, I don't believe I've ever met you. That's true. Um, let's start over. What your name is? Jesus, but my family calls me Yeshua. Your family? From Nazareth. Actually, I was only raised there. I was born in... No, no, no. that would have been Bethlehem. Bethlehem. Right. Okay, is this a joke? Look, I got better things to do than waste my time on some stupid joke. Who put you up to this? If you'll just say for dinner, I know this would mean something to you. How about, you, how about if you say, I promise at the end, I'll tell you who, who said it all out. Well, it so happened I got dumped for a basketball game. And I've been craving fettuccine Alfredo all day. Care for some wine? So your family called you Yeshua? Most of them. My brother James used to call me a few other things. Can you turn this wine back into water? No problem. <laughs> Excuse me, my friend here says that she'd rather have a cup of water Never than a glass mind. of wine. <laughs> so, what are you thinking? Thinking I'm a married woman was crazy for not leaving when she had the chance. I mean about your order. Oh, I'm staying on the fit to cheat me. Are you ready to order? Yes, I'd like the fit to cheat Alfredo and a Caesar salad. Okay. And I'll have the beef stew and a garden salad. Okay, we're good. You know, beats the bread and wine, huh? Uh, you know, one night on CNN, Larry King said of, the, of all the historical figures, Jesus Christ would have been the one you most would want to interview. I guess this is my chance, so, um, can you prove to me that you're Jesus? I don't think there's much that I could say that could prove that, that I could say to you that could prove to you that I am Jesus. That's one true statement. So, how about we suspend your disbelief just for tonight, and we proceed as if I really am Jesus. Okay. Now, if you were really sitting with Jesus, I know you would have some questions for him. Well, the other day I passed by a church, and it said, No one comes to the Father except through me. Signed, Jesus. Now, did he really say that? Because if he did, I think he's full of it. Oh, you're not going to ask me to do the blessing, are you? Oh. I know. No, i just like to say a word of thanks for a meal. Do you mind? Uh, no, not at all. Thank you, Father, for providing for us, whom you love. Is that it? I'm sorry. Do you want to add something? Uh, no, no, that covered it. <laughs> all right. So, no one comes to the Father except through me business. What's that all about? Why? Do you think I'm mistaken? Yeah, because you've got all these people around the world that believe in different ways of worshiping God. And you're saying that Jesus' way is the only way? And your problem with that is? A lot. Who's to say that Jesus' way is better than Mohammed or Buddha's or the Hindu? Remember that class you took in UT about world religion? Now, how do you know about that? What did that class teach you? <laughs> that you don't want what you're placing your ultimate trust in to be wrong because... Okay, what you're saying is that if a belief system works for someone, if it's wrong, it will eventually break down. The Hindus believe that the ultimate essence of the universe, called Brahman, basically means that God is the universe, and the universe is God. And they believe that the universe has always existed. Now, how does the universe... Oh, wait, now, how does that match up to what modern astronomers have discovered? Not very well, I guess. I did read an article once that said that all the evidence points to the universe having a definite starting point. So, if Hinduism, if Hinduism is true, then how did the universe get here? I don't know. I don't know either. Right. All right, about, how about Islam? The Muslim claim to worship their God. 
oh, excuse me, the God of the Bible. So who's to say that their version is wrong and your version is right? Well, that would all depend on whether or not God spoke to Muhammad. Well, you could say the same thing about Christianity. Did God speak to one guy? No. The Bible has over 40 authors who spent 1,500 years, all with the same consistent message. And Muhammad never mentioned that I was crucified. He said that angels appeared and took me straight to heaven. You mean Jesus? That's what I said. Right. <laughs> not sure. I'm sorry. Go ahead. But that's not the only problem with, it, with Islam. What else is there? What's your deepest desire? And I sure want to get into that. Let's say in general, what do most people heart, people's hearts long for? I don't know, a big screen TV. Seriously? <laughs> um, okay. No, I suppose people's greatest desire is to be loved. I don't mean to get too, pers too personal, Emma. <laughs> but in your experience of another person, has another person ever completely fulfilled that need for love? Tom's a good husband. That's not what I'm asking. Oh, I suppose no one's ever fulfilled it completely. That's because another person never can. Only God can. He created people that way. But the Muslims never have that hope. They can't have a personal relationship with Allah. He's just someone to worship, even from far away, even in paradise. Now, why would God create man with a deep need to be loved and then never meet it? Well, so maybe the Muslims don't have all the answers. But maybe God doesn't even exist. Then you're faced with explaining the design thing. That there's no way it all could have happened by accident? Do you know about the black hole theory? Pretty much. Do you know the odds calculated by the guy who came up with that theory that such a cosmic accident could create such an orderly universe? No. Take a guess. I don't know. One in a billion. Try one in a hundred billion to the 123rd power. And that's just the universe itself. He wasn't taking into account the design of biological life. All right, so you've managed to poke a few holes in all the other religions. But it seems like all the religions, Christianity included, are just different roads to the same place. I mean, everyone is looking for God. Really? Are you? Oh, um, as I was saying, everyone is looking for God in their own way. That's what I like about my, my French church back home. They embraced everyone's different belief and helped them on their path to God. There's just one problem with that. There is no path to God. So what do you mean there's no path to God? Every religion claims to, way, to teach the way to God. There's a way to God, but there just isn't a path. <coughs> what I mean is this. A path is something you travel by your own effort to reach a certain destination. But there's no way that you can work your way to God. The path just doesn't exist. Now wait a minute. That's what religion is all about, trying to get to God. How can you possibly say otherwise? Okay, did you ever get in trouble when you were a kid? This restaurant don't stay long enough to tell you how much trouble I've been in. <coughs> how, did, <coughs> how did your mom and dad handle a situation when you did something wrong? My mom, you mostly yelled at us, and my dad handled the spanking, but he didn't spank us very often. He was bigger on making us understand why what we did was wrong and apologizing to the other person, you know. See, your dad had a lot in common with God. How so? They both focus on restoring the relationship. Yes, I never thought of it that way. He's not interested to see people performing well enough for him. They can't possibly do that anyways. God created people to have a relationship with him so they can enjoy his love. So why don't they? Because man has rejected God. Instead of the relationship, God's whole program, if you can call it that, is all that and putting it all back together. Mm. Tell me this. When Sarah does something wrong, how many dishes does she have to do before she can get up in your lap and give you a hug? None. How many A's does she have to get in school? That's silly. Why? Because she, she doesn't have to do anything. She's my daughter. Well, there you go. So you're saying that we can't do anything to earn God's love? Back to the Muslims, who try to earn their way into paradise. They're never sure if they've done enough praying or fasting or making pro pilgrimages. Just ask them. They'll tell you the same thing. Really? And the Hindus. They're never sure how many lifetimes it takes to successfully work out their karma. But Christianity is no different. I mean, no one can really know if they've been good enough to make it into heaven. Oh, they can know that for certain. The answer is no, they can't. No one is good enough to make it into heaven, no matter how hard they try. So you're saying that doing all the right things, like 
Keeping the Ten Commandments or not cheating on your taxes won't get you into heaven? That's right. Keeping the Ten Commandments won't get you into heaven because no one keeps them well enough. Oh. Then why do them? Well, great profit in obeying God. But just won't get you into heaven. <laughs> Man's rebellion against God is like a huge rip in the moral fabric. With God on one side and everybody else on the other. And there's no way they can get to the other side. Why not? Uh, man's rebellion against God. Oh, wow. There you go again. <laughs> because only God is big enough to fix the tear. And God's standard is perfection. Boy, that's reassuring. And you wouldn't want it any other way. Why not? What does that you, mean? <laughs> would you really want a universe to be run by someone who wasn't all about a perfect system of justice, a perfect brand of holiness? Perfect brand of holiness? That's the last thing I want to deal with. So, you would want a universe where crime goes unpunished, where someone who harms Sarah gets off scot-free, where someone like Hitler isn't held accountable for the Holocaust. Not everyone is as bad as Hitler. No, but everyone is a rebel against God in their own way. It just doesn't seem fair, though, that Jesus sees everybody, in the, God sees everybody in the same way. I mean, some people are just worse than others. And God will handle them accordingly. But that's just the whole point, Emma. On what basis will you stand before a perfect God and say that you've been good enough? But I thought he was forgiving. God is forgiving. And more than anything else, God wants to forgive people so that they can return to him. But God's desire to forgive can't override his perfect justice. People have to pay the penalty for breaking God's law, and that penalty is death. So what has to happen before he'll take us back? Well, God has two options. Either you can let people try to pay their own penalties. Which you already said they can do. Right. There's no way that there's no way they'd be separated from him forever. God's other option is to take penalty of death on himself. How can he do that? He's God. The creator is always greater than the creation, and the creator said take the penalty of death on himself. That satisfies perfect justice. But if he's already perfect and holy, why would he want to do that? Let's say when Sarah is 20 years old, she falls in with a bad crowd and gets hooked on heroin. I'm painting a really cheery picture there, Jesus. Just stay with me. While she's on drugs, she murders someone and is sentenced to be executed. Would you take her sentence if you could? I'm sure I would. Why? Because I love her and she'd have the rest of her life to get it straightened out again and be happy. Don't you think God loves you at least that much? Maybe. I really don't know. Well... I know that's what God wants. I know, well, I know that God wants you with him, and that's why he made you in the first place. It is? Mm-hmm. But you're naturally separated from God because of the bad stuff you do, and to make good on the fact that a penalty has to be paid before you can be with God. God took your penalty on himself, and he died to pay it for you. So what's the catch? What does he want from me? Just that you trust him, and that you believe in the fact that he did die to pay your penalty. There's one thing I'm confused about. The Bible says that Jesus died on the cross, not God. Emma, I am God. Um, excuse me, can you excuse me for one second? Of course. Thank you, Elizabeth. Oh my gosh, this guy just told me he's God. They all do, honey. <laughs> just make sure he pays for dinner. something you couldn't even turn the wine back into water earlier. You just assumed I couldn't. So you're saying you could have, but you chose not to? And what if I had done it? I might have caught my attention. Well, then what? <clears throat> just bring
bring us coffee. Okay. I just don't believe that God asked people to just take a huge leap of faith to say that he exists. You're right. God always gives proof before he expects faith. Well, I watched a documentary once about a historical Jesus. And it said that he was an actual person, he was a teacher of a large following, and that the Romans did is execute him. You just skipped everything. Which brings us to the resurrection. What happened next? Well, uh, according to the disciples, Jesus rose from the dead. Why? Is that, is that the way they were, is that what they were expecting to happen? I'm not sure. Uh, the answer is no, they weren't. Even though I told them several times it was going to happen, they still didn't believe until they saw me in person. Uh, isn't it possible that they only thought that Jesus had died? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Just momento, please, I skipped a part. The prophet skipped it. Okay. What proof is there that Jesus was God? Well, for one, that's exactly what God said would happen. Well, for, yeah, well, when did he say that? The prophets predicted my birthplace 700 years before it would happen. One man wrote about the crucifixion several hundred years before Romans even invented it. Don't you think that's a pretty good tip-off? But still, that doesn't mean that Jesus was God. In truth, I forgave sins. I accepted worship. I healed the sick. I raised the dead and demonstrated my powers over nature. I said that I existed before Abraham, and I was one with the Father and the giver of eternal life. Now, who does that sound like to you? Just because you claim to be God doesn't mean that you are. No, but it means I wasn't just another religious leader. You only have three options. Either I was telling the truth, two, I was lying, or three, I was insane. Good religious leaders don't claim to be God. People distort the truth mainly because they reject proof, reject this proof they were given. And what proof is that? That I rose from the dead. Thank you. <laughs> okay, well, that documentary I was telling you about, <laughs> that he says that he's an actual person, he's a teacher of a large following, and the Romans did execute him. Those are facts. Which brings us to the resurrection. Right. What happened next? Well, the disciples claimed that Jesus rose from the dead. But of course they would say that. Why? Is that what they were expecting to happen? I'm not sure. The answer is no. They weren't. Even though I told them several times it was going to happen, they still didn't believe it until they saw me in person. Hmm. Isn't it possible that they only thought Jesus had died? <laughs> so the Roman executioners would let someone down off the cross for someone who was just badly injured, and three days later my recovery was so miraculous that, my, that the disciples thought I was God? Well, the disciples did have something to claim by saying that Jesus was God. Like what? Like having the whole status of uh, starting a whole new religious movement. So you're saying that the men who spread the word about me, one of the best records of history the world has ever known, that they did all this based on something they knew was a lie? Do you know that each of the disciples were eventually per persecuted and murdered? Would someone willingly die for something they knew wasn't true? I suppose not. Um, well, what about the Crusades and the Salem witch, witch trial and the wars between Protestant and Catholic and the Christianity? I mean, doesn't it seem like your followers are always at each other's throat? Yes, it does. And I can't tell you how sad it makes me. These people were only outwardly religious. They never really trusted me. Oh, huh. well, so where do we go from here? When someone accepts my gift, they get more than just forgiveness. Otherwise, heaven would just be full of unforgiven sinners, still running away from God. That's not what he wants. So what does he do about it? He changes them from the inside. Their heart and spirit have don't want to run away anymore. They want to be with him. They want to do the things that he says are good. A new heart just gets you into the game. After that, you have to let me be your coach. What does that mean? It means that you believe in what I did for you, that you've accepted God's forgiveness, and that you allow him to live inside you. Earlier you said something about being the giver of eternal life. What's heaven like? Heaven is a really cool place. People's senses have been so dulled by living in this broken 
world. They're just not going to believe all the sights, and sounds, smells, colors like you've never seen, music like you've never heard. There's always a lot of activity, but an overwhelming sense of peace. I feel stupid asking this. Are the streets really made of gold? <laughs> you know, describing heaven to you isn't exactly easy. It's like describing snow to people that have never seen snow before. There's not too many reference points for you to, to compare to. Just know that what the Bible says is true and far greater than what you can possibly imagine. And you're saying I don't have to do anything to get there? You're confusing this with eternal life. I thought they were the same thing. They're not. Eternal life is not a place. It's not even primarily a length of time. I am eternal life. The Father is eternal life. I'm still not getting it. Just as God is the source of all physical life, He's the source of all spiritual life, too. Look at it this way. What happens to your body if, if you take food, air, and water away? It dies. The same holds true to your spirit. God created your spirit to be joined with Him, and without Him it dies. Your spirit has no eternal life. But people don't go to heaven until they die. The same hold... Oh, okay. True. Yeah, that's the same one. The same old true, yeah, yeah. True, but Sorry. you can have eternal life right now. Eternal life doesn't begin when you die. It begins the moment you begin trusting me. That's when I come to live within you. You and me. Me, the Holy Spirit. I'm still not totally comfortable with God inside of me. I mean, I like the forgiveness part, but this other thing... Is the best part. You need someone to live inside you that will accept you and will want to be around you even when you don't feel good about yourself. Sarah wants to be around me. Just wait till she's 15. May I have your autograph, please? Yes, of course. <laughs> Just in case. <laughs> Wonder how that's going to go on eBay. Um, is there a hill? Yes. For those who choose continuous separation, from God, there is an existence, and it's not existence you want. Why does he send people there? The Father offers forgiveness to anyone willing to accept it. Sometimes people choose separation from God. Is that why humanity suffers? Because it separated itself from God? Yes. <clears throat> then why doesn't he make everything right and do it now instead of waiting for some date in the future? It's a little bit hard to answer because you can't see things from God's perspective right now. And there is a purpose the present. There is a purpose to the present and one day everything will be made right. Don't forget, God didn't leave you to suffer alone. He suffered more than anyone. Here, let me get this. Emma, it's a gift. Oh my. I thought they went through your hands. No, the spikes were driven through my wrists to support the weight of my body. They really are. You ready to go? Oh, Jesus. <laughs> uh yeah, I suppose. I just gotta hug you. <laughs> you never told me who uh, made the invitation. Oh, well, actually, it was you. Remember when your dad died? You asked why it happened. Not really. Well, I did. I've been playing in the center for a long time. Hmm. What we get for dinner again? Well, that's up to you. How so? Can you hand me one of your business cards? Yeah, sure. <laughs> this will tell you how to reach me. Okay. I'm glad you showed up, Emma. I enjoyed our time together. I have too. Here I am. 
I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and come in. 